I'm going to start by explaining what FAMFS is a little bit because it's, it's kind of different from anything else, which is why I think we need it. Um, so, and I work for a memory vendor. We're trying to enable uh, shared memory. And I think the way to think about that is taking what uh, map shared does on a single host and making it possible to scale that out with shared memory. Presumably, the shared memory will be CXL. Uh, FAMFS is actually not CXL specific in any way. It just uses DAX, and it will use DAX devices that are shared. Um, so real quick, a couple observations about shared memory, uh, a little bit of what is FAMFS and how does it work. Uh, stats, we should get through this stuff fast unless there's questions. Um, key requirements, and then about merging into Fuse, if that's a possibility. And then also uh, I have some other backup slides for obvious questions if they come up. Um, real quick about shared memory, though. Uh, shareable memory doesn't make sense to online as system RAM, because system RAM gets zeroed. So if it's shared, I mean disaggregated shared. More than one host can see it. Can't online it as system RAM. If anybody wants to debate that, I'm happy to, uh, preferably later. Um, it, uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna look like DAX devices. The thing that CXL provides for shareable memory is a DCD, dynamic capacity device. And they're kind of weird, but really the way to think about a DCD is it's a memory device with an allocator and access control built in. And so a DCD allocation can be shareable or not. It can be hardware cache coherent or not. Although, beware, that might not mean everything you would think it would mean. Um, and it can also be writable or read-only for a given host, if it's shareable. Um, and so, uh, but a shared DAX device is a fairly low-level abstraction for software to use. Um, I claim it's really kind of hard. There is some software that already knows how to do that. But there's a big pool of software that knows how to use uh, memory mapped files, map shared. Um, and so the idea is to uh, enable that stuff. Um, prior work on disaggregated shared memory tends to do the old, it's a new, abstract, it's a new paradigm requiring new abstractions thing. Um, problem with that is software doesn't adopt new abstractions. Um, if shared memory happens, some abstractions will happen. Um, so, background. Um, so FAMFS, it's a file system, but it's really memory, not storage. Um, it uses DAX devices. It assumes they're not persistent. Um, and uh, you can think of it really as a as an allocator whose allocations look like files. Now, it's not a general purpose allocator. For example, uh, when it allocates memory, uh, the, the allocation unit is two megabytes because we force huge page alignment. And we've got plenty of tests that show if you don't do that, it sucks. Um, let's see. So. Um, and the key thing about FAMFS, basically, it's an FS DAX file system, but it uses, it, it distributes metadata in a way that's shareable. And we've got other FS DAX file systems, XFS, I crypt a lot of code from XFS uh, for the read, write, and MMAT paths. Um, but it's a storage file system, and it uses write back metadata. And so if I've got a DAX device that can be seen on two hosts that's the same memory, I can, well, I can mount it read-only on both, which is hacky but possible. We've done it. Um, but if you want anything to be writable, it's, that's a problem. And so uh, the way FAMFS handles metadata is that the DAX device, there's a super block. There's a metadata log, which is append-only. And then the rest of the memory is referenced by files once they've been allocated and created. Um, 
files are strictly pre-allocated. We don't do allocate on write at all. We're not trying to be a file system, except that the file system is where the MMAP interface is or the, the file operations. And we're trying to solve the problem that DAX devices have limitations that you can't just take software that knows how to open a file and MMAP it and use it on DAX that easily. Uh, starting with, you can't stat it to see what the size is. Uh, you also can't make the size arbitrary. It has to be a multiple of two megs. Bunch of annoying limitations that aren't, uh, none of them are rocket science, but. Uh, and uh, so anyway, because it creates these DAX files that map directly to memory, it really does run fast. Um, okay, so, and I talked a little bit about this already. Uh, a dev DAX device is the, is the backing device. The V1 version of the patch set, V2 came out two or three weeks ago. Uh, V1 would run on either a character dev DAX device or a PMEM device, which is block. And that is a pain in the butt, but you can also convert PMEM devices to dev DAX mode. Uh, and I think it confused confused people who were coming to this and not, uh, and I wasn't explaining it very well. Uh, so now it only supports dev DAX devices. Um, that required plumbing the DAX IO map interfaces uh, for dev DAX because they weren't there. They were there for PMEM. And uh, so some code from PMEM is in the early uh, patches of this series. Uh, and as a result, uh, read and write, call dev DAX RW, or let's see, dev DAX, DAX IOMAP RW. And VMA faults call DAX IOMAP fault. And that goes down into the DAX layer and comes back up as an up call uh, on the IOMAP operations that we provide to DAX. And the question on that up call is, please reserve, please, please convert this offset in this file to an offset on a DAX device. Goes back down and DAX handles the rest. So if there's a, you know, a copy to user because it's a read, DAX handles it. If it's a fault, DAX handles it. Uh, FAMFS doesn't know the HPAs that are being resolved to. Um, in fact, it doesn't access the memory at all. The, might not be 100% true forever, but. May I have one quick, yes. quick question? So, so you have chosen to use DevDAX. Now, any reason why, why the device cannot be exposed as a PMEM, like directly PMEM device? Because that's what usually, you know, so, file systems kind of attach to. Yeah, so excellent question. Uh, V1 of the patch set works with PMEM. The way you open it is different. Um, so there was, when, FS DAC, or when um, FAMFS gets mounted, it had to do completely different things for PMEM and DevDAX. Um, and that's a pain. But also, PMEM can be converted to DevDAX mode. And yeah, I mean, an interesting question is, well, I know why PMEM is block, and that's because block file systems can run on it that way, right? Uh, but DevDAX, which is what you get for persistent, or for non-persistent, CXL memory is a character device and, you know. An interesting side effect of doing it this way, or of running on character DAX is this is now a character DAX device that uh, block ID from Util Linux might want to look at because there's a super block there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I'm asking mainly because currently, like, all the file systems were built basically to work with PMEM devices, right. yeah, essentially. Right. So, so now you have to basically replicate, like, all this file system level infrastructure to interface to another... It's not very much. I mean, the... Type the, of the device, DAX yeah. IOMAP stuff is actually all I had to, to clone into DAX. Um, and... I'll point at Dan. I mean, DAX devices can't be converted to PMEM, but PMEM devices can be converted to DAX. And so there's a sort of chicken and egg thing there. Um, there's also been, over a period of years, a discussion of whether uh, it should be made possible to, um, to run a file system on a non-block device. Um, I'm agnostic as to that point, except I'm working with what, how it works right now, right? 
Yeah, I, I was going to going to bring up that that um, when we, I think we we had the opposite opposite discussion when we first were doing PMM about well this thing's really not, this thing is not a block device it's a, it's a byte addressable memory range um, and and the block block devices come 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 with baggage that don't doesn't make, doesn't make sense for a memory device and so. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, almost a philosophical question <laughs> about about this. But the reason the reason the back, uh, uh, device stacks kind of exist was to you know, throw away everything that didn't make sense for for just a memory range, because DAX is basically just like dev mem but partitionable basically. But yeah. uh, okay, so so I have basically no problem with saying that you know now we rather want to get rid of the special PMEM devices and you know go straight to dev tax for everybody well, but uh, this might this gives you at least some of or this patch set already has some of what you need for that maybe yeah. not all i'm so, gonna guess not all are, 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 you say, are you saying to convert i'm assuming we, we would leave the existing fs tax path and dev female no. alone but for, for now yes but but like you know having two different frameworks for handling like you know, persistent memory devices for file systems, that seems kind of like an overkill. Yeah. It's like, I would rather than, it's not, like so far, we have basically two file systems that are supporting DACs, realistically, and it's relatively easy to kind of do the framework changes if we decide to. So, like, converging onto a solution, and I'm not really sold on any particular one, would be, in my opinion, good, good instead of like maintaining two infrastructures for two different backing devices. And although I, I agree that it's probably not a whole lot of baggage, it complicates stuff over right. long, long term. And it's not like we don't have a precedent for like file systems attaching to, to non block devices. We do have like file systems which are attaching to MTD, which are like low, which basically are devices which expose low level flash properties. And these are essentially also like character devices in the end. So, uh, so, so we already do have some precedent of file system attaching to a character device. So that's why I have no principal objection to, to this, but I would like to see some convergence on this, like mm -hmm. for all the file systems. Makes sense. I mean, and the code in question is, Quite small. Um, I have a reminder. I don't, I don't even know how to clear that. I'm just not. Um, okay. So, and this gets us to the stuff that begs the question whether Fuse should be involved in this, um, because yeah. next slide I've got some stats. But FAMFS, it's like 996 lines of kernel code, because what it needs is, for the most part, inode operations things like that, they're very RAMFS-like. In, in the patch sets, I said, it's a RAMFS clone, and then we blah, blah, blah. That turned out to cause confusion. That's my fault. But um, it's just that the files are special. They have the SDAX flag set. Uh, they cache up metadata so that they can rapidly handle uh, VMA faults. But user space maintains, I mean, I guess you could say user space maintains the super block on media for most any file system because MakeFS creates it, right? But uh, user space handles space allocation and log append and log play. And log play reads through the log and creates whatever files the log says should exist. In memory, they're, back, they're ephemeral metadata. These are inodes whose, whose changes, if any, don't get written back. If you turn on a time, it won't matter in this case, because there's nothing to write inodes back to. Because the point is that we allocate some memory. Well, the memory allocator way of thinking about it is we allocated some memory, and it's a file, so you can find the file and then map it. Um, the mode that I think that most of the interest we see, and there's a number of different companies uh, testing more than one class of use case with this, um, is something like wrangle large data frames into a memory efficient, memory mappable format like Apache Arrow, which gives you vectorized columns and things like that. It's intended to be mapped. 
dump those into FAMFS, and then run like a distributed futures orchestrator like Ray to orchestrate a bunch of jobs that consume the data from the big data frames that you put in the shared memory. And they already know how to do that with files. They don't even need to know that these files are a little bit special. And, and this is a huge bonus, I don't think I mentioned cache coherency in the slides at all, but those use cases are almost all dump the data in and then consume it read-only. And that's beautiful because cache coherency is hard and it's going to be worse for memory that's disaggregated. Um, so because user space plays the log and does, uh, you know, is responsible for allocation and file creation and whatnot, could Fuse do that? Um, so real quick, uh, I did a talk on, the, on FAMFS at Plumbers last fall. Uh, been working on it for a little over a year. Um, V1 patch set was February of this year. V2 was a, three weeks ago, something like that. Um, it's under a, under a thousand lines of code in the kernel, about 5,000 in user space. I'm, I just want to say, I don't like this metric because it's not about the number of codes in the kernel. It's about but, having to maintain um, duplicate code, uh, that's obviously not correct from the set uh, because mature code always has uh, some subtle cases that are taken care of. So mm -hmm. it's not about how many lines of code. So Fair I, I really want to know uh, things that they are missing from Fuse or Vert, Vert IOFS. Um, and, and this is the way it should be considered, I think, not right. by lines of code. Understood. Um, okay. so. There's basically two key requirements for FAMFS to be useful, which it actually, and it already meets these requirements. Um, one is it's got to perform, and what that means is that it's got to service VMA faults and read-write based on in-kernel cached metadata. Um, if we had to deal with upcalls for that, this is memory we're talking about. It might be a little higher latency than the native system memory, but you just got to do that stuff right. Um, and I've corresponded some with Luis and uh, Dave Chinner on benchmarking and all, and it's, I'm sure there's more things people want to see, but it's pretty fast. Um, the other thing is distributing metadata in a shareable way, because the whole idea is that I want to dump data sets into this thing, or I want to dump indexes that an app wants to search by memory mapping them. Um, another thing, if you're calling read-write, you may be doing it wrong if you're using FAMFS, because uh, the point really is that uh, it's memory, and so the most interesting apps are the ones that memory map it. Um, and part of how we deal with shareable metadata is the log is append-only, and we don't reuse space within a FAMFS file system. Uh, we don't even support delete at the moment. Now, I've become convinced, in, in part from talking with uh, customers with use cases, we can probably support that, but there's, got, there's some knowledge of the fact that files might get deleted that a use case may need. In particular, if you're going to reuse the space, then if some of the client systems have a stale copy of metadata, they could have a file pointing at memory that there's a new file pointing to. Um, okay, so, so to Fuse now, um, the big things, and I'm not an expert in Fuse, so uh, I had asked on, on list a while back, um, and Miklos is the maintainer, okay, got your name right, good, thank you. Um, we had an exchange back in, I don't know, October or November. Uh, about VertIO, because Vert, or VertIOFS has some kind of Fuse support in it. Um, and uh, I, the best I could figure, it ends up, it's not what FAMFS needs. Um, some of my main evidence for that is FAMFS needs the DAX IO map stuff, which I had to patch in. Um, now, from talking to people about how Fuse works, my understanding is that VertIOFS may interact with 
DAX in order to mmap like an FS DAX file from XFS or something like that. That's, and so that's actually at a different level, um, a different layer in the, in the stack, kind of. Um, could it do this? I think it definitely could. I think that the thousand lines of code that we're not counting <laughs> probably would end up almost all of it in Fuse because um, cause what Fuse would need to do is let us cache an extent list of um, right now a FAMFS instance sits on one DAX device, but we foresee likelihood of spanning. Uh, so today uh, the DAX device is assumed in the extent list is offset length pairs, and it's almost always one extent. Uh, in the future, it might be DAX device offset length. And so. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe Miklos should answer this, but uh, Virt IOFS just maps memory to whatever. It doesn't even map it to, to uh, PMEM usually. It maps it to a uh, guest, mem to host memory. It's just uh, an interface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that LFS is, is, I guess it's a different use case, but uh, it seems to me that um, pass-through is uh, quite similar, with the difference that this is a, this is a sort of spe special kind of uh, file, and uh, current pass-through is just uh, per file, and uh, we need, for, for this one we need uh, these uh, extents, to work, but that's something that has uh, uh, already been planned for, for Fuse to support. So I guess if, if um, adding uh, support for, for uh, 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 extents within a, a file, so offset and, um, uh, and length, uh, that, that would be useful for other things as well. Hmm. And so I, I guess um, uh, it's, it, it doesn't sound too difficult to add this um, to Fuse. So, so I, I don't know anything about BirdIOFS, but does it, can it support the semantic of multiple hosts talking over, sh talking over shared memory to each other? Uh, it supports uh, uh, it supports well yes basically because uh, it, it uh, shares the hosts uh, um, page cache to the I, guest okay so two things I got to jump in here the reason why it probably doesn't matter whether it's fuse or as it's currently factored for multi-host sharing is because FAMFS is still going to have to process its own metadata. So whether or not the log always looks the way it does, there's a metadata log that has to get played. And that establishes what files are there and what they map to. And so that should replicate either way. Um, but Miklos said page cache, and I want to say, hold on, we don't use the page cache. Yeah, ever. Uh, no, well, that's, that's, no, that's what I have, and, and uh, that's, big, uh, that's what I'm saying, that it's a different thing. Okay. That's, that's right. uh, sharing, sharing the host page cache to the guest. And uh, so it's, it's, um, okay. it's, yeah. uh, it, it doesn't share anything. I guess that there's uh, nothing that could, could really be shared with this one. Okay. Yeah, because that's a thing that's different from FAMFS and regular file systems, except for FS DAX files in FS DAX file systems is that yeah, with FAMFS, they always map to DAX memory. And, um, and then you can do things like, David, did you want to say something? Am I? So if I could just grossly oversimplify what you said, it sounded like you said FAMFS is basically a, a thin metadata layer on top of DAX, which does most of the properties of the sharing. So it sounded to me like FAMFS didn't need to care about the sharing specifically because DAX did it. And so is that not true? 
I don't okay. think that's quite right. So, I mean, so, so DAX is just a memory range. Um, all, all the properties of how it's shared, whether it's shared, is would we would come from FAMFS. So only FAMFS knows that there's another host here that there might be metadata. Um, DAX is just here. Here, here's an address range you can a uh, character device you can map. It doesn't know anything, anything about the properties. DAX, yeah, DAX owns the address range. FAMFS. So, knows what offsets it's accessing. So, so effectively your metadata is a sh effective a shared metadata that somehow you have to coordinate with other systems, yeah. which is what makes it difficult. It, it is, and I've punted on most of the hard problems in order to make it actually simple, which is there's a metadata log that's append only. And the super block contains various things, including the UUID of the system that did the makefs. And so systems know if they're not the master. But the point is you still maintain this, u this in user space. So yeah. the metadata is all maintained in user space. It is. And all the file system is doing is still just a thin sort of yeah. metadata processing layer, which is why they're asking about views, oh, because yeah. the maintenance overhead goes down dramatically if there's only a couple of interfaces you have to add to views to get all of this to work. That seems to be the question, right? Yeah. Okay. And I, I mean, I, I put the quit fuse question into the cover letter for the patch set. I'm, I'm yeah, slightly so, so dubious of whether it's similar to the other things that Fuse is doing, but that's a... Well, but it doesn't need to be similar. It just needs to be something Fuse can do easily from where it currently is. Yeah, so, so I, I cannot really 100% comment on how much this is feasible within Fuse pass-through or not. That's probably for Amir and Miklos. But yeah, as a kind of file system maintainer kind of person with, with this head on. So, so, so I have two comments, you know, one, one is, uh, you know, we have seen it many times that, you know, things start simple and then feature creep in, you know, so, you know, that's part also of, of the like less than thousand lines of code argument because, yeah, sure, at this point it's simple, yeah, but then, then you want to add deletion, then, then people start to request like hole punching, then people start to request uh, whatever. And, you know, we have been through this many times and I don't think it has ever actually worked. <laughs> like always the features have crept in and always things were getting more complicated well, than, it, than it anybody was. when you said 10,000 because it's 1,000, but. <laughs> oh, sorry, 1,000, yeah, sorry. Uh, so so, so th that's like one comment that, yeah, it's simple at this point, but if this is merged, then I don't believe like it will be as simple like five years from now. And the second thing which is kind of worries me, is, you know, so, so here really the kernel part is kind of simple that it uh, basically just maps, map, maps the stuff to user space, yeah? And then basically the substantial part of the file system is in fact in user space. And then my concern is like, what's the testing story of this? Because like, yeah, now you are doing some, you know, file system interface changes, which are going to involve your file system. So, so we somehow need to, you know, be able to test that we, whether we are breaking things or not, and when a lot of stuff is in user space, then this presumably puts, like, presumably puts the, like, the setup is going to be, like, non-standard and maybe may kind of difficult to do. Uh, so, like, that's, like, for this I would like to have some good story how, like, other file system developers can actually work with this, yeah? So, Advantage of FUS would be that then basically we don't have to care that much because unless you touch the specific FUSE feature which your file system is using, then basically we don't care as file system maintainers. So that, that these are just like my two concerns for which I would like more to see this as a FUSE module, but yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I mean. It's pretty straightforward to test with, um, you have to have some DAX memory, but you can get that with the kernel command line parameter. Um, the shared cases are a little more complicated. They're testable with pairs of VMs and that kind of thing. Or with actual shared memory, which I've got in the lab, but I also use VMs a lot. Okay. Um, we need to wrap up unless you have some last thing, but I think that next step is really try to utilize existing uh, subsystems, and if there is a problem, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Cool. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh,